Hello everyone, welcome back to British. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, Afra and I had the opportunity to interview someone who does a lot of work within our community of Gravesham Borough. Uh, so more on that in a second. Uh, just to quickly let you guys know, we've started an official Instagram page for British. So if you wanna check out what we're doing, we're like keeping updates on the podcast, sharing book recommendations, you know, sharing other, stuff stories um it'd be great if you could come uh, join get connected we are at british brit underscore ish podcast on instagram um, you can also check it out on spotify there should be a link to the instagram or on the anchor web page so thank you so much and i hope you enjoy the episode hi welcome back to the podcast i'm jeevan i'm here with my co-host afra and hi, today I'm... we're here with a very special guest this is govinda sander the ceo of the kent cohesion council so govinda would you just like to introduce yourself give us an idea of what you do how your groups work within the community and stuff first of all real great honor to be um, on your podcast really pleased to have the opportunity to talk about our work so my name is Govinda Sander. I wear many, many hats and trust me, I need to be wearing a hat today <laughs> uh, with the way my uh, hair is growing. So I run two Pacific organisations based here in Gravesend. We work across Kent and also work across the Southeast region. So firstly, I'm the CEO of a charity which is called the Kent Equality Cohesion Council. And mm -hmm. I've been working there for 21 years now. And the primary aim of that work is around helping supporting victims of hate crime, helping supporting victims of racial discrimination and harassment, um, providing that kind of um, buffer between sometimes the community organisations, um, so members from the local community and uh, public sector organisations, be it the police, be it mm -hmm. the, um, you know, the, the, the local authority, the NHS. So we're there as a kind of um, a buffer of support. So we will even now provide help and support to people who are suffering from, you know, be it discrimination, harassment, English is a second language and unable to access services. Um, we'll provide help and support to people who maybe need advice around issues to do with like employment, maybe suffering discrimination in the workplace or need access to services and they're not sure who to turn to. So, that's one element of our work which i kind of call the this, this kind of social policy element of our work yeah and and that's the work that people don't see mm -hmm. that that is the work where people will come to us um you know for one-to-one -one support be able to telephone or, or in person um and the other piece of work which we're kind of more well known for which is the high profile work uh, which kind of supports the charity i'm also the artistic director of an organization called cohesion plus and Cohesion Plus is an arts organisation and we organise festivals around Kent and in other parts of the South East where we use the arts to bring communities together. And that is kind of the more high profile in what people see. Uh, but my background has always been around kind of uh, equality um, and kind of social policy. And in a way, basically the work of Cohesion Plus that kind of subsidises and supports the work of the Equality Council. So yes. that's a long answer, but um, I think it's important to just to kind of explain. Um, it's good. We like long answers. Yeah, exactly. One's like behind the scene and then the other one is, you know, like doing things in the community, working on events and both like so important to create that's social it. cohesion in Gravesham. That's it. I mean, you kind of covered it in a nutshell. So there's two kind of elements to it. And, you know, when we talk about social cohesion, community cohesion, in essence, all the work we do it's about bringing communities together. We're mm -hmm. passionate, you know, we passionately believe, you know, there's more that unites us and divides us. And yeah. the more we can encourage communities to work together, to support each other. Um, and, you know, you, you look at Gratiam, you know, in terms of the minority ethnic population in Gratiam, it's the, it's the highest in Kent. But we've got a real proud and long history of communities kind of working together and supporting each other. You know, I mean, yesterday I was involved in an event, for example, for Windrush um, and, you know, the Windrush generation who come and, you know, kind of contributed to the borough of Gratiam. Mm -hmm. I, I've written books and made films about the story of the migration from the Indian subcontinent. Um, but, you know, we've got a long history here in Gratiam and that's what we, uh, in terms of migration, immigration, having diverse communities. And that's why our work's about is uh, bringing everyone together. So 
you know, to me, when we talk about community cohesion, social cohesion, it's about us coming together as communities and celebrating the kind of values that bind us together. Yeah. Um, and it's about obviously respecting different faiths, respecting different communities, respecting different beliefs. But, you know, if you strip everything down, you know, there's more that unites us than divides us. And that is what we try to um, uh, articulate through our work, be it St. George's Day, be it Eid, be it Windrush, what we've done yesterday, be it Christmas celebrations, you know, be it the Fusion Festival. It's about using these opportunities, um, even like a, a Pride Month, for example. Unfortunately, with COVID um, this year, you know, we, we've not been able to uh, celebrate uh, Pride like we were planning to do. But it's about, you know, using these opportunities to bring everyone together and to educate and support each other, really. Mm -hmm. So one of the major topics that has been in the news and kind of brought up a lot of conversations people have been having about, you know, what we can do as a community to support ethnic minorities has been the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. So what have you done as an organisation to, you know, promote this movement and to kind of intertwine it in Gravesend and Gravesham? So one of the first things we did, I mean, obviously, as an organisation, as a diverse organisation who uh, fights around discrimination, uh, and you know some something i've been doing obviously for 21 years in gratian i felt as an organization we needed to um be proactive mm -hmm. right so you know it isn't we're not like maybe some organizations where it's taken the black lives matter campaign to for them to stand up to fight racism because that's obviously what we do anyway yeah, yeah the whole but, gist but, but what we did and i think we took a responsible kind of attitude we were contacted by members from the community local community specifically like the black community saying look this is going on we're not happy what should we do and obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic yeah so this is what i'm saying hopefully we took a kind of responsible role so it'd been very easy and i'm very confident that we could have pulled together an event and mm -hmm. got hundreds if not thousands of people together but we've also got a kind of social responsibility as well you know you look at COVID-19, there's been a disproportionate impact on people from minority communities. And, you know, Gratiam historically, you know, we're not one of the richest areas of Kent. And so, you know, uh, disproportionately there's been an impact on people who are at the lower end of the economic spectrum. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to create something to create some kind of big event where then we get criticism and <laughs> put people at risk. Um, so what okay. we did was we organized an event and we basically we did it on a, like a need to know basis. Um, uh, and we respected social distancing. So we organized an event working with the North Kent Caribbean Network. And we got members from, you know, different kind of black led organizations based in Gratiam. And we had an event at the um, Fort Gardens and where we spoke about why we felt it was such an important issue. Uh, colleagues spoke from the, the Caribbean Network, but we also, interestingly, which garnered a lot of attention afterwards. Um, I spoke to Kent Police while we were, we were organising the event and they said they would like to come along as well. So the Chief Constable come along. So the Chief Constable is the most senior officer in Kent. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, so, and, and you know, so for the Chief Constable to attend and to also take the knee, but we all did to reflect and to remember George Floyd and the other victims and to just kind of reflect on where we are as a kind of community, as a society. And for him to take the knee as well, I thought was really powerful. And speaking to members from the community who were there after, they said that was a real uh, powerful image for them as well. <laughs> um, but afterwards, that event, I mean, even last week, it was mentioned on CNN. You know, it's been in The Times, it's been in The Mail, Guardian, Independent, um, nationally, internationally. And it was... Obviously, the national papers and the internationally, they were interested in it for the fact that the Chief Constable of Kent, you know, took the knee. But for us, I think it was important to show that the community of Gratiam cares. And this is the way we did it in a kind of socially responsible, responsible way. Yeah. But, you know, but it's carrying on. So it isn't just like we've done that event. Great. You know, what's next? So I've been in dialogue with Kent Police. I've been in dialogue with other kind of partners and um, organizations that we work with about how this is the moment where organizations need to step up 
And so bearing in mind, yeah, I've been doing this work for 21 years. Great strides have been made, don't get me wrong. But still, if you're specifically from the black community, you're more likely to be excluded, right? You're more likely to be stopped and searched. You're more likely to get a longer jail sentence. Obviously, we've seen the impact of COVID-19 um, and the impact on VAME communities. You know, so th there are still uh, social factors out there that need to be looked at and examined. So although in the 21 years I've been working, you know, it's improved a lot. And, and I can say that from the casework I was getting when I first started, you know, the amount of help we was giving to the level of casework we get now. It doesn't mean that we have made, um, we're perfect. And I think hopefully this is an opportune moment for decision makers, policy makers to take a look back at what they're doing and how we can all work together you know, have those conversations and how we can move forward together. And I think that's something here in Gratian we've been really good at. Mm -hmm. We've been good about having those conversations and, you know, leading, um, you know, stuff like St. George's Day. Yeah, it may not seem a big thing, but when I first started doing that 10 years ago, uh, and when I was growing up, so someone who's born in Gravesend, when I was growing up, if I was to see the British flag, Union Jack, or to see the flag of St. George, the connotations for me were around race, around in those days, it was a national front, uh, then like, you know, the BNP. So for us, you know, kind of son of immigrants growing up, the flag wasn't seen as something to be proud of. It was something that was associated with the far right. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons I wanted to do St. George's Day was, and we started doing integration with people would say, oh, you do Diwali, you know, you do Vasaki, you do this and you do that. And nothing, no, there's nothing for St. George's Day. And in the, early days i used to say to people you're right that we do diwali because the community organizes diwali you know we do vasaki because the community organizes vasaki and the reason we don't do st george's day because no one basically gets up and does it but i thought you know what i will do it so we started organizing that and there was even skepticism from the council at the time because they were worried about how st george's day would go down but we've shown that what we did with st george's day and you know the other events for now we do like Eid and what we're looking to do with the Pride this year and the Black History Month. All these events we should use them as a way for bring all communities together, and you know so we can all learn from each other, we can support each other. And at the end of the day, we're residents here of of Gravesham, yeah. And that is what kind of binds us together, and we've got these kind of shared values, and that is what it should be about. And that's what to me, you know, community cohesion is about. Mm -hmm. and why i think in gratium you know we always have bumps along the road but why generally we've got positive community relations yeah so it's really interesting you talking about there um like it's a lot of it's something that people have said quite a lot they don't always know what the right thing to do is with black lives matter and all these events and stuff i think it's really great that you're putting on these events and bringing people together and spreading awareness. Um, but something that Afra and I have been discussing quite a lot um, is just the nature of discrimination in today's society and how it might be prevented. And we think that one of the best ways that we can try to stamp out racism is through education at any level, schools, adults. Um, so I just wanted to ask you um, like specifically, um, also bearing in mind there were discussions in 2019, I think it was, on um, teaching children about LGBT history in schools and primary schools as part of sex education. So what role do you think schools have in teaching tolerance? Um, do you specifically plan on working with schools or young people to teach them about these topics? I think education is critical. So I've I done a round table, which is available on YouTube, where we done talked about um, Black Lives Matters with people from the local community in Gresham. And, and that is something that come out strongly there as well. Education is the key, not just mm -hmm. around Black Lives Matters, but obviously, as you mentioned, like LGBTQ as well. And, you know, other um, areas, you know, there's a long kind of history, I think, um, in Britain around kind of championing, promoting equality. But we need to ensure that the children understand, so my children understand, you know, about what, you know, what, how we've got to where we got to today. So be it around, you know, the kind of race relations act, be it around, uh, you know, disability discrimination, be it around, 
you know, the long journey uh, people who were gay had to go upon, you know, the fact that it was illegal to, you know, do, you know be homosexual and everything else, yeah, uh, around that. So I think education is the key. And obviously it's important, I think, the schools to do it locally, but I think it's something the government needs to make sure is kind of embedded into the, that kind of national curriculum. Organisations yes. like ours and, you know, other people like the work that colleagues like the Grand do, you know, places of worship do, we're all here to help and support and kind of bring that real life experience, yeah, to, to, to bring sometimes history of life um, to pupils. But I think the leadership needs to come nationally through the national curriculum. But I definitely agree with, with both of you that organisations like mine, the Grand, faith organisations, other community groups out there in Gratian, we've got a role to play. Um, and, and I think it, in a way, it kind of brings that, brings those stories alive. So it's not just about reading. I'm sure for yourselves, it, it'd be more interesting once you've read about, for example, the history of, say, migration in Gravesend, for you to actually listen to me or somebody else to explain when I was growing up in Gravesend, in fact, I was born here, the way I was racially discriminated in primary school. You know, I remember going into town and being spat upon and my parents being sworn at to where we are today. I mean, it's a journey. And I think mm -hmm. having organisations um, uh, talking, going into schools, I think it brings those stories to life. Definitely. And that's something we speak about quite a lot, how, like, through education, like, like you said, it needs to be on a national front because you can't poke holes in the government is saying we're going to teach this and it's going to be spread across the curriculum because it just if you know if you understand you're not going to be able to hold ignorant views or you're going to have some type mm. of like an yeah. understanding and i think that's why it's so important the work that like organizations do around kent around the country but obviously for it to be really meaningful and consistent it needs to come from government i think just quickly um racism can also be an incredibly personal thing i know we talk a lot about um Afra and I have a podcast called British and we talk a lot about systemic racism and the institution of it and how people are kind of put in a position where they're kept at the bottom but as you say like growing up and um, facing racial discrimination like against you personally against your parents like the things that I've heard from my mum when her parents first moved to Gravesend from India mm -hmm. the things that they went through and I think me like we're both history students so we learned about um, civil rights movement in A level and we did um, Native American genocide in GCSE. A lot of people who kind of hold these attitudes of these people are different from me and I want to treat them differently and they're not worthy of my respect. They just don't really seem to or people who even deny that racism exists in the first place kind of are ignorant to the fact of other people's experiences and that's why I think it's so important that we yeah. not just have this on school curriculums but we share our experiences and people take the time to understand and to listen to other people. Mm -hmm. Especially as you're someone in the community like seeing you talking about your own experiences it makes it like it will bring, be closer to home from someone that maybe doesn't understand and that's why like, this work is so important and people they need to realise that it's not so far away even though these things are happening in America we have our version of it here we're not perfect. Mm. No no 100% so I think you know so if you look at as I explained a little bit before you look at the you know the stats you know, as I said, you know, about prison, schools, exclusions, and, you know, uh, kind of economic backgrounds of people and everything else. You know, it's difficult. There are barriers there. And mm -hmm. I really do think there's a bit of a watershed moment that hopefully that people, you know, big companies are coming out and, you know, BBC come out yesterday about their diversity and how they're looking to increase it. I really just do think that organizations leaders just need to step up mm, and definitely. say look they say look we're not perfect organization my organization included you know we all make mistakes but saying that this is what we want to do we want to help and support so i mean yesterday i was watching a football and there's a really famous retired player graham Sunis, and he's a football or as a ex-football manager as well now <laughs> and he was talking mm. to um um, an ex-player, an ex-black player who used to play for Manchester City in England called Michael Richards. And he was explaining that he said, look, in my football career, I come across racism, you know, openly twice in my career because when I was a manager. 
and he goes where you know really derogatory terms were used against black players and he said he never challenged it he said if somebody said that to me today he goes i would challenge it and but what he was saying to the black footballer michael richards is he goes you need to be educating us you need to be telling us yeah as well so that we can stand beside you and we mm -hmm. can uh, stand shoulder to shoulder and support you and that's what it's about it's about education what you, you guys mentioned before and just talking about that, I also think it's important to stress, talking about Black Lives Matter, I feel that particularly the right wing are pushing the agenda of all lives matter. And I think it's important, I think, for people to understand when we talk about Black Lives Matter, we're not saying a black life is more important than, you know, someone from, you know, the Asian community, the English white community, but it's about, in essence, saying black lives matter too. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's not saying it's more important. And I feel that from some of the stuff I've seen on social media, some of the stuff you see, that people are trying to use it to create uh, like a race war, kind of create tension between the different kind of communities. At the end of the day, there is only one race, which is the human race. And if we could just remember that, you know, hopefully, you know, we, we can have, um, you know, progress and work together, you know, the world will be a better place. Mm -hmm most definitely so the last question just to round it all up obviously in the uk so the black lives matter movement now in the uk has been focused towards a lot of the teaching and the history that the uk has with colonialism and then that has then fallen back onto the statues and the controversy around those statues and if they should come down or like what should we change so what do you do you agree that there are bits of british not culture but society and how we've got to where we are today that needs to be recognized and addressed and even some aspects that need to be changed i think when we look at for example a colonial past for example it is part of what has made great britain today mm -hmm. and i feel that it should be you know going back to education it should be uh tall warts and all yeah right and i think that is where you know so you know it should you know we should be open and transparent as a nation because i think that's how we will move forward to say look you know a lot of our power and influence come through our through our empire and you know there would have been good parts and there have been bad parts and it's about understanding the good parts and the bad parts and having those kind of honest conversations and using that as a means of moving forward as a country if that makes sense yeah so i think you know so for, you know when i was growing up and when i when i was at you know um, studying at school many many years ago i think it would have been you know I, i've been really interested to learn more for example about the impact of the empire in india for example yeah just mm -hmm. obviously from my heritage yeah and you speak to people from you know other communities that are interested you know about the impact you know the empire had in the caribbean you know the slave trade um and how you know the slave trade you know is en enabled um people to get very rich and you know on the back of that build big organizations and companies that still are around today i think we need to have that kind of conversation and but it's about having those conversations and hopefully trying to learn and to move forward uh, move forward with that um so yeah, I mean, we've kind of said it before and again and again. I think education is just so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Well, I think yeah. a big thing about it is um, with um, people attacking statues of, for example, Winston Churchill, when even Queen Victoria, a statue of her, was vandalised at some point two weeks ago. Um, mm. But I think the problem is that people, I, need, I know you say about acknowledging the past and warts and all, like good things and the bad things. But I think one of the problems is that people kind of, don't really acknowledge the bad things anymore like mm. maybe not anymore but we kind of look at winston churchill and to a lot of people he's the symbol of um britain in world war ii defeating fascism and hitler and stuff but then we kind of forget the other elements that um his role in the bengal famine and his role in uh, bloody sunday in croke park at, um in ireland and i think it's really important that we kind of assess what kind of values and the kind of people that we idolise and that we put on pedestals in this country. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, one of the things I saw, I can't remember which paper I read it in, when there was discussion around uh, with the statues to have more kind of informed kind of descriptions and stuff. Yeah. With, you know, and, and I don't think that's a bad thing to, you know, to, to have that. And, and I understand, I think the mayor in, mayor of London, I think they, they've, they've set some some kind of thing. Group yeah, they're re-evaluating all the yeah. statues that are up and going back over that. Which, which isn't a bad thing because it encourages that kind of conversation. I'd rather have a conversation and wait and move forward. See, the, the danger of pulling statues down is it creates tension within communities as well, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that then plays into the hand of extremists as well. I rather, if, if there's a way that we can, you know, have communication and work out a way forward, as you said, that which gives a proper context and history to whatever, um, you know, whatever statue or monument that we, we, we're, we're kind of talking, uh, which we're kind of talking about. Um, and then that's down like a broken record. And that's where that kind of education, education, the kind of communication kind of comes in. So, you know, we shouldn't be, some i just feel sometimes especially since the, the brexit debate in this country we, we're just constantly just shouting at each other and we yeah. need to be so divided yeah and you yeah. know so we, we need to have we need to be talking to each other and understanding each other's perspectives we're not always gonna um agree on everything but um for hopefully having that kind of communication and dialogue you can find that kind of common common ground mm. So um, how can people find out more about your work? Um, obviously the website, cohesionplus.com, but we're also quite active on social media, uh, particularly on Instagram and Twitter, and also Facebook uh, at Cohesion Plus. So please you know, get in contact, please follow, and please support our work. Mm -hmm, definitely. So those are all our questions, but Govinda, thank you so much. Like the work that you do within our community through educating people, putting on events, it's so well received and it's so appreciated by so many of us. So thank you ever so much for coming on to the podcast and chit-chatting with us today. And yes, I hope you have a lovely day. Stay safe from the <laughs> virus and everything. But yeah, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm